You beautiful bastard, welcome back. I missed your face. And uh, before we jump into it, uh, a big announcement. Just in time for your holiday shopping, whether it be a well-deserved gift for yourself or someone you care about, we have the beautiful bastard Christmas truck with amazing custom ugly sweaters and beanies, the reimagined emotionally exhausted drain heart, including the new varsity zip up hoodie, some fantastic split exhausted gear. I think these are probably gonna sell out, so grab those fast. Some one day we'll all be skeletons, our brand new good friends, bad choices line. Last but not least, the heavily requested from the ladies of of the nation, the bitches be crazy, it's me, I'm bitches line. And all of that, of course, available at beautifulbastard.com for the next seven days, but because a number of things here are custom cut and so there are stock limitations, so grab what you want while you can. 100% will be items that sell out before the end of the full drop. Yeah, with all of that said, welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show. Hit that like button to help support some common sense news coverage here on the YouTubes, and let's just jump into it. You know, the first thing that we're gonna talk about today is this very weird news that involves the likes of Justin, Bieber and Muhammad Bonesaw, I'm sorry, his real name, Muhammad Bonesaw. No, Muhammad Bon, no, Muhammad Bonesaw. No, the crown prince, Muhammad Bonesaw. That's because over the weekend, Hatije Jengez, the fiance of journalist Jamal Khashoggi, asked Justin Bieber to not perform in Saudi Arabia. Right, as you hopefully remember, Khashoggi was killed at the Saudi consulate in Istanbul back in 2018. And a US intelligence report has since implicated Saudi Arabian crown prince, Muhammad bin Salman, in the murder, even though MBS has denied any involvement. So you have that, and then this coming December, Justin is one of a handful of singers slated to perform at the Formula One Saudi Arabian Grand and, pre. and so Hatije is asking him to please pull out of this lineup. Writing an open letter published by the Washington Post and saying that ever since her fiance's murder, quote, many human rights organizations and individuals, including myself, have been calling for justice and accountability. That's why I am writing to you with a plea. Cancel your December 5th performance in Saudi Arabia. This is a unique opportunity to send a powerful message to the world that your name and talent will not be used to restore the reputation of a regime that kills its critics. With her adding that there are no doubts about the circumstances of the murder, that the UN declared it a, quote, international crime, just as the US placed blame on MBS. And adding that while Justin, yes, is traveling to Saudi Arabia for his fans, there are Saudis of all backgrounds in prison right now just for expressing opposition to MBS. With her writing, last year you wrote to your followers, I want to use the platform I have to remind people that racism is evil and is ingrained in our culture. Considering this very honorable commitment that you've made to take a stand against injustice, please use your platform now to support the cause of human rights in Saudi Arabia. Do not sing for the murderers of my beloved Jamal. Please speak out and condemn his killer, Mohammed bin Salman. Your voice will be heard by millions. And notably here, she's not the first first person to say that Justin should speak out here. Last week, Human Rights Watch released a statement calling out Justin and other artists on the event's lineup, including Jason Derulo, ASAP Rocky, and David Guetta. With that statement reading, on the surface, the festivities are meant to show race attendees an amazing time. But a look beneath the hood makes clear the Saudi government's intent to use these celebrities to whitewash its abysmal human rights record. Saudi Arabia has a history of using celebrities in major international events to deflect scrutiny from its pervasive abuses. Some celebrities, including Emily Ratajkowski and John Cena, have declined gigs in Saudi Arabia, citing a concern for human rights. Bieber and his peer headliners have a prime opportunity to follow through on their public commitment to human rights and social justice. But all of that said, as of now, Justin has not responded. It'll be interesting to see if he or any others do respond. If so, what do they do? And so the question I wanna pass off to you is when you look at this situation, what do you think of the celebrities that are gonna go there and do this or have done that in the past? Do you see them as these people that it turns out they don't stand for anything? They're puppets that'll do anything for money? Or no, are you maybe have the mindset that Khashoggi's fiance and Human Rights Watch there, they're speaking incorrectly. This isn't how to handle the issue. I mean, as you can tell with how I opened this story, I think Muhammad Bonesaw is a fucking monster and I would never do anything to help wash the blood off of his hands. Also, side note, fuck Netflix again for removing that uh, Saudi Arabia episode of Patriot Act. Big believer in beacon of free speech, except when it comes to the Saudis. But yeah, that's the story. My opinion, of course, I pass the question off to you. Then in kind of shocking business and shopping news, it turns out that people do buy other things and beautiful bastard gear for the holidays. And in fact, that is so much the case that some stores are genuinely scared and changing policies. Right, how many times over the last Last 15 years have we had a post Black Friday show and we're like, hey, just look at this insanity. People trampling each other, getting into fist fights after waiting hours, if not days outside of a store to open. And so now one of the biggest stores in North America, Target is going, nah, not for us. Announcing this morning that starting this year and continuing all future years, its stores will remain closed on Thanksgiving. With Target CEO, Brian Cornell telling employees, what started as a temporary measure driven by the pandemic is now our new standard. And this also appears to be one of those things where it's like during the pandemic, we had to do something new and now companies are sticking with it, like work from home. And for retail stores, that was during the pandemic in an attempt to limit crowd sizes. Instead of having a Black Friday, they just had Black Friday sales starting as early as October. And as it turns out, it proved to be incredibly successful with the AP explaining that the old model of opening stores on Thanksgiving only ever served to cannibalize Black Friday sales. And in fact, under the new model last year, holiday sales rose 8.2%, with the National Retail Federation predicting that these holiday sales could hit anywhere between 8.5 and 10.5%. So maybe it turns out that it's not that Target doesn't want you to kill each other, but it's actually
actually, it turns out they make more money when you don't. Though, in other news, Black Friday or not, that is not gonna be enough to stop some crazed shoppers. Yeah, so what you're seeing here is a group of 14 people in a Chicago suburb raiding and looting a Louis Vuitton store in broad daylight last week, snatching purses, grabbing everything they could, reportedly all 14 working together and making off in three separate vehicles. Police confirming that the thieves had stolen $120,000 in merchandise. With police saying they've now recovered one of the vehicles, but also added that they haven't made any arrests. But uh, main thing, this doesn't seem like an isolated story. Because actually on Friday night, we saw another Louis Vuitton in San Francisco's Union Square, as well as at least nine other stores in the area being raided. Cell phone footage showing people running out of the store with their hands just absolutely full. And while I can't show it because of the platform rules here, the video goes on as a police swarm a Mustang begin beating its windows with their batons. Notably, they pull someone from the passenger seat and pin them to the ground. You also have footage of the aftermath showing the store pick clean, its windows absolutely shattered. A TV reporter in the area also sharing similar images from inside, noting that stores for Burberry, Fendi, and YSL were also raided. Reportedly over $1 million in merchandise stolen. Also, as far as what happened with that incident with the Mustang at a news conference later, you had the police saying that they were confronting an armed individual. Also adding they've now seized it and another vehicle as well as made eight arrests. And very interestingly, you had police chief Bill Scott calling the attack concerted and added, there's no doubt in my mind that this was not unplanned. And if you think that's the end, it's not because then the next day around 80 looters ransacked Nordstrom near San Francisco with all but three reportedly getting away. With each of these incidents seeming to escalate during the attack, two store employees were assaulted with one even being pepper sprayed by the looters. You also have the police calling this specific raid like the others clearly a planned event. And yesterday night we saw another raid this time at a jewelry store also outside of San Francisco. Though I do want to note here, investigators currently have not been able to confirm whether all of these San Francisco based attacks are connected. And you know, as someone that worked retail growing up, I, I see this news and I'm like, oh great, because working retail didn't suck enough already. But yeah, I guess main point, just try to be careful out there. But from that, I want to take a second to thank the sponsor of today's show, Simply Safe. Simply Safe is an easy to use, install, and completely customizable home security system that is effective and free from contracts or any hidden costs. And if you've ever wanted to make your home feel safer, there's no better time than now. Simply Safe is giving you beautiful bastards early access to all their Black Friday deals. That's 50% off or more on their award-winning home security. With Simply Safe, your home is professionally monitored 24/7, and if anything happens, Simply Safe's always on team will call the authorities immediately. As I've talked about before, I've even had Simply Safe outside my shoot room. We've had some not so great security issues in the past. It was terrifying, and so I'm a big believer in you can never be too safe. And Simply Safe launched a new wireless outdoor security camera with a 140 degree field of view. That's wide enough to keep watch over your yard and eight times zoom and built-in spot light with color night vision and two-way audio that allows you to speak directly to someone on your property. It's really cool. So yeah, go to simplysafe.com slash Franco and save 50% off or more on your Simply Safe security system during the biggest sale of the year. Then if you happen to be on a freeway in Carlsbad, California on Friday, the police would maybe like to have a word. And that is because on Friday, an armored truck dropped loads of cash onto the freeway, causing drivers to hop out of their cars, scramble to scoop up some of the money. The money reportedly belonging to the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation and it's scattered when one of the doors of the truck popped open, allowing bags of to fall out and break open as they hit the ground. With footage of the chaos that happened afterwards since being posted on social media by people like fitness influencer Demi Bagby. Literally everybody stopped on the freeway to get money off of the freeway. This is literally insane. And here's the problem with this video. As many people online have already pointed out, these people are basically just showing themselves committing a crime. As much as I am a believer, especially when it comes to other people's stuff of finders keepers, that is not US law. And in fact, the same day, California Highway Patrol announced that they were working with the FBI to retrieve any of the money that was illegally taken. With the seeing by mid afternoon, about a dozen people were reportedly going to the department to hand in what they had collected, though it's unclear exactly how much was taken and returned. Authorities also saying they ended up arresting a man and a woman at the scene who reportedly locked themselves out of their car with cash in hand. With law enforcement officials then thanking those who had already come forward and adding that investigators were planning to track down those who had failed to do so using social media posts. With the authorities later releasing 16 photos and video still frames of people who stole cash saying that they are encouraged to turn in the money within 48 hours in order to avoid potential criminal charges. But yeah, ultimately I think the, the two main things with this story, one, shout out to the one person smart enough to cover their license plate. I don't know if you noticed that in the video, but that really stood out to me. And two, consider this your year Really to Franco reminder that if you get free money, right? It drops out into the street and ATM gives it to you incorrectly. Return that as fast as possible. You'd not get new shoes. They will hit you with charges. Then we should talk about how just in time for the holidays, COVID cases across America are spiking again. According to the New York Times COVID tracker, the new average daily infections have increased more than 20% over the past two weeks. With more than 90,000 cases being reported each day. And that figure is especially concerning because it's the highest that we've seen since early August when cases were just starting to trend up, the beginning of what would later be marked as one of the most severe surges in the pandemic. With more than half the states seeing 
seeing sustained spikes and in infections, but the upper Midwest and Northeast are currently being hit the hardest. But the sort of kind of good news here is that experts believe that the holiday spikes this year will not be as bad as last year, with nearly 60% of the population fully vaccinated now. So as a result, you have top public health experts like Dr. Anthony Fauci saying that wide availability of vaccines and testing this year make it so that fully vaccinated people can hold relatively safe, though never entirely risk-free holiday gatherings. And that is actually especially true because the CDC on Friday authorized boosters for all Americans 18 and older, massively expanding eligibility. So yeah, something to keep in mind, especially since over the next month, there is an increased likelihood that you're gonna be around more people and uh, potentially more unvaccinated people. Also, when it comes to COVID, if we look to Europe, they're dealing with a different issue, right? Europe has been struggling to vaccinate its population and has also faced much stiffer pushback to COVID lockdown measures amid outbreaks. Over the weekend, Croatia, Italy, and the Netherlands all faced protests by thousands of people over new COVID measures. The situation in the Netherlands actually leading to gunshots by police in the city of Rotterdam, where the mayor said that the protests turned into, quote, an orgy of violence that had turned into alleged attacks against officers. From there, some cities face even bigger protests. Brussels and Vienna each struggling to contain tens of thousands of demonstrators. With the Vienna protests breaking out because of that 20-day lockdown, largely for the unvaccinated that we covered last week, as well as the government unveiling plans to make the COVID vaccine mandatory by February of 2022. And in addition to opposing lockdowns and the vaccines, many of the protests across the continent revolved around the so-called Green Pass, which is the certificate that proves that you're either vaccinated, have recently tested negative, or have recently recovered from COVID-19. Without that pass, people would be barred from going into venues like restaurants, concerts, or bars. Alongside more severe travel restrictions between European Union countries, which many protesters view as undermining a fundamental tenant of the Union. And as I mentioned, all of this comes as many of these places are facing large outbreaks of COVID-19, with some outbreaks being so bad, such as in Germany, that the country's health minister there remarked over the last day that by the end of winter, people would either be vaccinated, recovered, or dead of COVID-19. Yeah, with all that said, I'd love to know your thoughts on what we're seeing with these protests, the reactions, and I, I say that whether you live in those countries or if you're kind of in the majority of the people that watch this and you're in North America. And then we should only talk about this Peng Shui China IOC situation because it's an absolute mess. So on November 2nd, Peng, who is a former number one ranked doubles player, accused a senior Chinese official of sexual assault. And then it seems to happen with people that are in China that speak out against China, she kind of just disappeared, resulting in tennis players, celebs, politicians, and fans saying, where is Peng Shui? The head of the WTA, the Women's Tennis Association, also threatening to pull lucrative events from China. Then, as Axios explained, China's state-owned broadcaster released a statement from Peng that read more like a hostage note, and in it, she said her sexual assault allegation was, quote, untrue, and that, quote, everything is fine. China state media journalists publishing photos and videos showing Peng allegedly sitting in her room, eating dinner with friends, and attending a tennis event. With all that, met with justified skepticism. And on Sunday, Peng held a 30-minute video call with IOC President Thomas Bach. And reportedly, according to the IOC, she is safe and well at her Beijing home and asked for privacy at this time. But of course, even with that, lots of skepticism. Right, a number of people looking at this photo that's being spread of the video call saying, okay, so she makes a big sexual assault claim, she then disappears, she then, in a, di in a letter, recants, and now she's here just smiling, having a good old time. With WTA CEO Steve Simon saying, it was good to see Peng Shui in recent videos, but they don't alleviate or address the WTA's concern about her well-being and ability to communicate without censorship or coercion. The IOC video does not change our call for a full, fair, and transparent investigation without censorship into her allegation of sexual assault, which is the issue that gave rise to our initial concern. With the IOC also getting slammed by many for this call on Sunday, calling it a publicity stunt. Right, and that in part because the IOC has already been on the receiving end of intense hence international backlash for having the upcoming games in Beijing. With President Biden last week even saying that the US is considering a diplomatic boycott. And y'all, I mean, China does not want people to know about this story. Right? They are the king of censors. They have armies of censors, whether it be social media or I mean, something that was kind of eye-opening. CNN was doing a report on this and at the bottom right hand of the screen, they were showing the CNN feed in China at that time. The moment they started talking about Peng Shui, bars and tones, which is in part why I do commend the WTA here. As Slade's Ben Rothenberg wrote, after decades of mostly silence from corporations, the WTA's willingness to challenge the Chinese government, demand transparency, and risk losing millions of dollars is radical and transgressive. And unfortunately, as tweeted by the economist Gaddy Epstein, we've grown accustomed to silence when there's money at stake in the China market. And while kind of different, it also brings us back to the, the Justin Bieber story that we talked about at the beginning. At what point with so many of these peoples and these companies is the money not worth it to look the other way? Personally, I'm a cynic. I think it'll require unprecedented pressure, especially because most people know that uh, the, the public in general only has so much of an attention span until moving on to the next thing. And hey, I even include myself in that there's so much happening all the time and it's very easy to feel like, 
what can I actually do yeah. with that? I would love to know your thoughts about any and all things with this Peng Shui situation. But ultimately, that is where that story and today's show ends. Of course, with that, whether it be this final story, the first one, anything in between, I'd love to know your thoughts down below. Also, remember, grab what you want while you can over at beautifulbastard.com. Amazing drop. But of course, as always, my name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love your faces, and I'll see you tomorrow.